In this clip, I am going to show you a pretty quick way to do solar envelopes on the site. Uh, this is our site. Uh, I'm going to demolish that building and then up there the circle, the semicircle in the blue line denotes a open area that we cannot cast shadow on. So let's start by just hypothetically making a footprint of the site, that rectangle there. And uh, what we need to do is first set up the sun, the document sun information. And if you don't have this tab already, just type in sun in Rhino. It will call up this interface. And you simply have to put in the location. Um, uh, I think I used the stock model of a DC map, so Washington, DC. Also remember, if you have a different project north, make sure you set it up here, too. Mine is the same, so I don't need to change anything. Let's go to the PCPA GH plugin in Grasshopper and find this sun vector component. And all you need to do is uh, use text panel to put in a range of month and hours. We're only looking at uh, December, so you can have the same beginning and end, 12 to 12. And for the hour, let's say we're looking at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m put that in the hour range uh, because we're, we're uh, speculating about the future. Let's just, for the sake of this exercise, put in uh, 2021 as a year because uh, sometimes years matter. And if you do change the minute interval, it will change the resolution of the vectors, the sum vectors. So the smaller the number, the more vectors you will get. And now let's extrude that area that we can't cast shadow on uh, in reverse direction of these solar vectors. Uh, so we can use an amplify component to control how tall that extrusion is. Um, let's just use 50 to 150 for now and see how it looks. Of course you need to set that geometry, the footprint, put it in a curve and feed that into the base of the extrusion component. Uh, okay, I need to reverse the direction. Let's just use a uh, expression editor there. Reverse it. Negative one. Um, not very tall. Even 150 is too small. So maybe we'll we'll add another expression, a multiplier rather here. Now there we go. Um, you know the the swooping form is very sparse. So we may we may need to decrease the minute interval here. Uh, let's try five minutes, which is a pretty high resolution. Uh, so every five minutes it calculates a vector and then do this. It does this uh, extrusion. And now we need to intersect a straight up extrusion, say like a tower form with these sweeping volumes. The point of getting the intersection is that uh, we don't violate these volumes. That's how we know we don't cast any shadows. So let's make these components. Uh, it's a little too short. Let's put in a multiplier like so. Uh, as long as it intersects fully, it should be fine. Later you will see it doesn't necessarily have to puncture through. Um, but so if we cap them, uh, now we know we're operating in solid, so let's go to solid difference right here, put the subject into A and all the cutting ones into B. It might take a second or two to calculate. Uh, let's uh, shut off the preview of these and now you can see the bottom part is the actual solar envelope. We can reduce the height of uh, this tower extrusion just so we don't get too much of the above. Um, it's really useless. <laughs> Only the bottom is a solar envelope. Um, we might need to change our time period, the hour range, to a little bit earlier so that we get the actual results that we want because our, our building is kind of southeast of the open area. So you can see this kind of south, uh, saw tooth uh, expression on top of the solar envelope. If we decrease it, decrease the minute interval, let's try one. It's a long computing time. I'm skipping over it. But uh, if you want, you know, you can get a very smooth sort of texture now. It's um, more accurate this way, but you're giving up a lot of computing time. Sometimes it's, it's, it's better to 
just use uh, you know use some discretion uh, on your own. Uh, I think three minutes interval uh, is good enough sample for this case. Uh, you know, it's still a sawtooth, but um, I'm going to change it to seventy. Uh, increase the height of my tower extrusion just so. I am inter intersecting it fully, making sure it's not leaving anything out. Um, so that's good. Um, so there's there's your uh, sol solar envelope. Anything within it should be able to steer clear of uh, the shadows on that open area. Now, what if we want a smoother top? Uh, because we have distinct shape of the open area, you have this distinct edge, the bottom most edge on each of these volumes. Let's extract those, uh, the bottom most edge. Uh, because they are extruded the same way, we can just use a list item. It's the same index. It's going to be the same edge across all of them. Um, and luckily, the zero index item is in, indeed the lowest most. So let's uh, loft those. We get a smooth surface. And uh, let's disable the preview on some of them. And you can see, you know, compared to the sawtooth, you know, it, it is interpreted, but still, uh, compared to the sawtooth top, uh, is a much more, um, let's say, accurate way of representing the solar envelope. And now we know that it starts kind of not early enough. Let's change it to 8 a.m. so we can actually get the entirety of, there you go, uh, get that little corner on the bottom, right? Um, now you can see the comparison. So with this sweeping surface, uh, what we can do is, rather than the, the um, solar envelope with a sawtooth expression on top, let's disable this. Uh, we can extrude a tower and simply intersect that tower with this sweeping surface. And then uh, the intersection curve or the intersection loop, uh, we'll be able to provide us with the, a maximum Z value um, of the extrusion. So, you know, I'm using the decompose bounding box component to get the uh, right here to get the D, Z domain of the bounding box um, you can see here it's 97 to 200 uh, something so that Z value is what we need we can use it to parametrically control a um, extrusion let's first decompose that domain the starting point is a lower end and now let's make another extrusion parametrically driven by that uh, parameter by that uh, z value uh, in this case uh, we'll be able to know that no matter what you do to change uh, in the front of course we need to get rid of the multiplier so now you can see it in the preview no matter what we do to change the upstream component it would adapt to it it would always always uh, uh, extrude up to that lowest point of the intersection Again, let's try to change it to March and see what happens. Um, I think the intersection missed because my tower extrusion is not tall enough. And this is not it because, uh, okay, I'm using, I'm re it's redundant. I need to delete this. I just used the one that I had before. It would actually work. So yeah, that one is redundant. Let's just change it to that and delete these. And make sure we intersect fully. You see that intersection loop on that surface. Um, it's all working now. And of course, daylight saving is taken into account in my component. However, in this case, it really just shift your hour a little bit earlier. So it doesn't quite change anything at all. Um, so there you have it. 